So we now have authentication in our Django REST Framework API and we're using JSON Web Tokens for that. We're going to move on now in this video and we're going to look at some other generic views that are part of Django REST Framework. And we're going to look at update and delete functionality for some of the items, the products that we have in our API. So I've got the documentation on generic views open at the moment. And at the left hand side, you can see as we looked at earlier in the series, this particular package has some mix-ins and some concrete view classes. Now, a couple of the concrete view classes we've not looked at so far are these two here. It's the destroy API view and the update API view. And these come with corresponding mix-ins and that's the update model mix-in and the destroy model mix-in. Now I'm going to click through to the destroy API view and these are used for delete only endpoints for a single model instance. So you can imagine fetching a product from the database and then you want to remove that product. What you do is you send a delete request and that's an HTTP request method. That delete request will have the instance ID somehow attached to the request so that Django can identify which product is to be deleted. And then that deletion will happen in the database. And similarly for the update API view, these are update only endpoints. And again, these are for a single model instance. And this provides put and patch method handlers. So you can send a put request or a patch request, and that can be handled by the update API view. Now notice as well on the left hand side, we have some composite views here. We have a retrieve update API view, a retrieve destroy API view, and also the very long one here, the retrieve update destroy API view. And the reason these can be bunched together is because each of these needs to have an ID for the particular object that's to be retrieved, updated, or deleted. And that logic can, can be consolidated in these classes here. So if you want to provide the action to get an individual object, to update that object, and to destroy the object, you can use this view here. And if you only want to retrieve or update an object, but you don't want to allow it to be deleted, you could use the retrieve update API view. Now, I actually want to use this one here because we want to allow the ability to get a product by its ID and also the ability to update that product and also to delete that product from the database. Now we're gonna to go to the Django application we've been building so far with this REST framework API. And if we go down here, we have at the moment a retrieve API view. It's called product detail API view. And this is going to retrieve a product by this lookup URL keyword argument. So basically if we look at urls.py, we have this endpoint here and it's got a dynamic path parameter called product ID. And that's what's going to be used to look up the actual product in the database. It's going to come from that URL parameter. So what we're going to do is remove the reference to the retrieve API view. And we're going to call this, or we're going to subclass here, the retrieve update destroy API view. Now I'm just going to keep the name of the class the same, but you might want to also change the name of this class. And once we've updated that, I'm just going to save views.py. And what we're going to do is open api.http. And remember, that's that file that we're using with the REST client extension in VS Code. And we're going to look up a product by its ID. So I'm going to copy this get request here. And we're going to add a new request just below that. And we're going to get a product with the ID of 1. So we can append the URL parameter of 1 to that URL. And then if we send the request, and before I do that, let's start the Django server on the terminal at the bottom. We can do that with the run server command. And then again, we're going to hit the send request button here. And we're going to get back the object with that ID of one. So this is a product and it's a book, a scanner darkly. It's an excellent book if you've not read it. And we get back the details for that book. Now what we can do here or what we can see is that if we go to views.py, we've changed what we're subclassing. So we're now subclassing retrieve, update, destroy API view. And that allows us to not only get the product, as you can see here, and that was a request that's still working as expected. But we should now be able to send a put request and a delete request to this URL here in order to update and delete the product respectively. Now what I'm going to do is just copy this get request and I'm going to add a put request to this URL. So let's paste in this here. I'm going to change the method to put. And what we're going to actually put here is some data. So we're going to look at the post request that we have here. So that has this content here. So I'm going to use a content type of application JSON and I'm going to copy the block of code here and we're going to send that similar block of code for the put request. So what we're going to do is hopefully update the product with the ID of one so that it's no longer that book a scanner darkly but it's going to be instead a television. So let's save this and we're just going to test this out. I'm going to close the sidebar here and we're going to hit the send request button and we get back a response here and as it says at the top it's a 200 OK response 
and we get back the JSON data for the newly updated product. So now if I close this and we go back up to this get request to get the product with the ID of one, we can hit send request and you can see that that has now updated. So the data that's been sent in the put request is now updating that product in the database. Now the reason for this is because this class here that we're subclassing, this is smart enough to understand how to fetch the product by the ID and the URL. And it's also smart enough to understand based on this serializer class, how to take the incoming JSON data and how to update the existing product in the database based on that data. And we can actually do the same for a delete request. So I'm gonna to go to this page here. We're gonna copy the get request. And just below the get request, we're gonna add that delete request. So we just changed the HTTP method to delete. And this is gonna tell Django REST framework, we want to delete the product with the ID of one. So that ID again is present in the URL. When we send the delete request, we get back a response here. It's an HTTP 204 response, and that means no content. That's a typical response status for when you send a delete request and you delete a resource on the server. And now that that object is deleted, we can go back to the get request. And if we try and get the product with the ID of one, we now get the detail message here that we don't have a product that matches that query. Now, once again, you might want to vary the permissions for these different request types. If we go back to views.py and we looked at what we did previously on the product list create view, we were allowing anyone to fetch the list of products, but if it was a post request in order to create a new product in the database, we were restricting that to administrators with the is it admin user permission class. Now we can do something very similar here for our other view. So I'm gonna copy the get permissions function and let's add that into the subclass here that we have of the retrieve update destroy API view. Now again, we're gonna to default to allow any here. So if you want to fetch an object by its ID and that's a single object, we're gonna allow anyone to do that. But if the request.method is going to be a put request or a delete request, we can restrict that to is admin user. Now I'm gonna change this slightly rather than checking if it's equal to a single HTTP method. We're gonna check if it's in a list of methods here. So the methods are gonna be put and also we can add patch in there and also delete for the delete request. So if a put request or a patch request or a delete request comes into this view, we're going to restrict the permissions to only administrators. So let's test this out again. If we go back to api.http, if we then go to send a get request and let's get the product with the ID of two now, when we send that request, we can get the product, no problem at all because get requests have the allow any permissions. But if we change that to a delete request, and, or rather if we change the ID here and we send this request, we're going to get back that authentication credentials were not provided. So we cannot delete the product from the database unless we have the is admin user permission successfully passing. In other words, we need to be an administrator. Now I'm gonna show this with the put request as well. So if we change the ID to two here and we send this request, again, we get back the same message and we can obtain the credentials by sending a post request to the login endpoint. So if we scroll down here, we have a request to get an API token and that's a post request with the administrator's credentials. When we send that request, we get back the response that contains that access token from the previous couple of videos. So we can copy this and what we're gonna do is add that to the header for the put request. So if we want to change the product with the ID of two, we can add that authorization header and that's gonna be a bearer token and we can paste the value of that token in here. And because the user who is associated with this token is an administrator, when we now send the request to update the product with the ID of two, we get back the response. And you can see now that that should be equal to a television. The name of the product should be television. So again, send a get request to get product with the ID of two, and you can see that it has been updated. So all we need to do now is just add the authorization header and for the is admin user permission, as long as the token is associated with the admin user, that's now going to allow you to send a put request. And it's the same concept now for the delete request. So that's all for this video. We've looked at how to add an update and delete endpoint using Django REST Framework. And we've seen how to subclass these composite classes that are provided by REST Framework, such as retrieve, update, destroy API view. What we're gonna do in future videos is move on to concepts like pagination, filtering and searching in Django REST Framework. But I want to move on in the next video to look at an important concept and that's generating API documentation from our API classes here. So we're gonna move on to that in the next video. Thanks again for watching this one. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the channel, please check out our coffee page. It's in the description. And thank you very much to everyone who's donated so far. Thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video.